Hey guys, Groundwood. This is the last episode in the EU4 Switch series. And briefly before this video starts, I just want to tell you that this is a breakdown and some analysis by me and my friends on the last two games that we've been playing on the channel that you've seen part of the Switch series. And basically who we thought did better, I asked them a couple questions about the game itself. And it's really interesting to see how the different hours affects the, the reasoning they, they say for who did better. So stick around and take a watch, it's, it's pretty interesting in my opinion. Uh, to start off with, uh, what is your name or username? Um, I'm Brayden, and uh, my username in the game is Leviathan. Um, Son on Discord. Proteus. Who do you think played a better must be game and why? Um, I think that overall, uh, Mitchell or Groundwood played a better must be game. And for the why, I have some points that I can share through Skanderberg. So this is the map for uh, Mitchell's Muscovy, Muscovy game. And as you can see, the land area is much larger for Muscovy overall than in Alex's Muscovy game, where his expansion routes have been kind of blocked off here by Denmark. And he hasn't expanded very far into the Horde lands while Mitchell has taken full advantage of the Hordes and moved right on in. However, um, there was a couple things that Alex actually did better. Uh, for development wise, Alex's capital of Muscovy, or Muscovo was developed up to 30, while uh, Mitchell did not put any development points into his capital. So that was, didn't really hinder him that much, but if the game had continued longer, would have led to Alex having more of an advantage, I believe. Also, uh, this is for Mitchell's game. If you look, the average Monarch points he was gaining per month was 6.33, while in Alex, he was gaining 10.17. But Alex didn't seem to use these points very well, as he's uh, in orange tech, which means he's behind most of the world. And Mitchell was also uh, uh, in a orange tech, but a lighter orange, so Mitchell was actually doing better in the technology realm. Um, overall, I think that's about it on why Mitchell played better. Just overall, his development, uh, economy, and buildings were all better than Alex's in the long run. It's a tough question. They're both, I guess. Yeah, I guess you could say they're both kind of comparable, but... Would you say that in terms of map gains, don't describe the actual performance itself? I mean, the territory control is a pretty big factor, but it's not all that describes like the whole game that went down. Yeah. Uh, certainly the Muscovian view was much larger. Uh, you gotta take in the fact that yeah, I'm pretty sure Sasha's Muscovy got quickly invaded by like Lithuania really early on, and I kind of like was a detriment to his whole like situation. Uh, I still think that Sasha would have played a better Muscovy if his like I guess luck with Lithuania would have been better, uh, considering he was able to actually beat the Great Horde and he yeah, like annexed Tver and whatnot. Um, I think that Mitch did a better uh, Muscovy game because he worked better with his allies and he played more a cautious approach to Muscovy, whereas Alex uh, played a more, a much more bold maneuver and uh, unsuccessfully did it because his allies didn't stick with him when he needed them. What areas do you think that each player made a mistake in? Um, I think both players made a mistake in fighting wars with Denmark, I believe, early on. I think both players actually ended up doing that and it kind of hindered them for a while. Uh, I think it hindered Alex a lot more, as you can see from this monstrosity. Um, I think like little mistakes, like I was mentioning earlier for Mitchell, like the development and just overall focusing more on Monarch points could have helped him do better, but it didn't keep him back very much possible mistake to point out is for the for your game you could have I guess uh, 
guess you could have like tried to go south and secure like the Great Horde areas more. That could definitely be a thing, and then you could prepare for the to build up against Lithuania. It's basically just quickly farm Russia. For Sasha's game, I think you could have like definitely tried to handle the whole Lithuanian debacle better. Is there a specific game mechanic that you believe each player used well? Specific game mechanic? I think Alex was... I know I've been talking a lot about this, but this is like pretty important for... May I say high level EU4 gameplay? Um, he focused a lot on Monarch points and development, and so this would allow him to snowball his country later if he hadn't made this blunder of um, messing up his expansion and really weakening himself. I think Mitchells didn't really use a mechanic super well in any way. I think Mitchell just overall didn't mess up anywhere and just kind of used everything. Like he fought wars and did everything pretty normally. And so that, uh, let him have a pretty average game, which was better than Alex's more riskier playstyle, which ended in a not so good position. You're talking about like more for, for like playing Muscovy and Russian stuff. Well, the important one of the important factors is like expanding into Siberia and stuff. I, I don't the most decisive game factor in that regards would be like the Siberian frontiersmen and colonization and stuff, which. I, we didn't really see much of because we didn't really get too far in such games. But if I could, if I could, I think, I, I guess you took more advantage of like the alliance system and how like, uh, how EU4 AI calls in, a, calls in their allies to wars and, uh, and like how like the ally is willing to accept a war. So you, I, you could say you like chose your chose your enemies wisely. Uh, and yeah, as Sasha, as you described, like Sasha did do some like more mercenary stuff, well, which is how he was able to like desperately hold off from like that early Lithuanian invasion. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, hello. My name is Alex, and I was a the Muscovy player. Uh, in this EU4 campaign, and you know. Uh, so, what do you think would be? Uh, how would you just basically describe the game in your point of view from as Muscovy? That's an entire game. Basically, give me a rundown of your your game. Well, everything was going fine until uh, Crimea it was like, uh, and, and my own big brain moments then when I became suddenly a tributary of Crimea by an accident I offered them to make me their tributary which is making me their subject even though I'm like superior to them so basically the beginning was so good even though the RNG didn't go to my favor yeah. Lithuania allied Novgorod which it was terrible but they paid for it, they crushed them like a thousand times. Killed the entire, plundered and killed the entire Lithuanian population. Like good stuff. But then, I accidentally off uh, wanted to offer vassalization, but accidentally misclicked and be became the tributary of Crimea. And uh, they accepted it and it was a bra moment. And I started collapsing. First of all, my economy was even worse because it was demanding stuff from me. Unfortunately, I could not just break the tributary immediately because of some stupid game mechanic. I hate the developers for it. And uh, then some dudes, the Tatars, the Great Horde invaded my overlord, quote unquote, and I had to defend them. And then Ottomans inter intervened in the some bad stuff happened. We had some like Crimean War basically that started like how much like 400 years earlier. And uh, you know, we kind of won, but 
we long we won the short run but the long run i became bankrupt a thousand times I, I, okay not a thousand two times and uh because of that the lithuanians and danish and the country of kazan as well as perm which is supposed to be my vassal they all went to war with me after that this and yeah the great depression began and i was very yeah hey guys so that's the analysis i personally believe that i did a better muscovy playthrough simply because of the final land boards that i achieved and i think that's what separates me and alex's muscovy games although there were certain challenges that he had to face that i didn't for example alex's rng of lithuania starting with novgorod that is a pretty common and a recommended opening move is to start by fighting novgorod and having novgorod and lithuania ally each other pretty much prevents a uh, beginning war with novgorod so he was inhibited there by that choice of the ai um, but even so, there were still a couple mistakes that he made that I simply didn't. I chose to stick with a fundamental playstyle of being cautious, that's just the way I play. I use the alliance system as some people noted out in the analysis. But there were some things that I didn't do that Alex did do way better than me. For example, the development, the development of the capital specifically. I mean that I believe that just simply comes down to experience. I had no idea that you should be able that you should develop your capital in such such a high regard. I focus on tech mainly instead of development in the early game, and I think that's what sort of separates a good player from a mediocre player like myself. And so I think that's even though I didn't do as well in that regard, I still think I did a better game simply because of my decision making cautious playstyle.